Last week, we celebrated the resurrection of our Savior. We stood in awe of a Redeemer who's defeated sin, conquered death, and changed our eternity. Now, the work of the church begins. It's our time to go and tell the world about Jesus, to let them know they are loved, to show them they are cared for, to be the light of Christ to those around us. The story of Easter is not meant to be kept quiet. The love of Jesus, His grace and mercy, the power of His resurrection are meant to be shared with our friends, our families, our communities, our nation, and our world. Today, there is light overcoming darkness, hope destroying hopelessness, victory rising out of defeat, and life rising from the ashes of death. It's time to climb the mountaintops and proclaim in one loud voice, He is risen. He is risen indeed. Trust God. Trust the miracles you have known. Trust the miracle you can be. Well, good morning. So good to see all your smiling faces and uh, just want to welcome all any visitors that we have with us today. We thank you for blessing us with your time this morning and we also welcome all those joining us via our live stream. Yes, we are live streaming today, so I'm told. So uh, we apologize to those for that little glitch last week, but uh, we did send out uh, a secondary link to watch the recording from last week. Uh, but uh, you know, the lovely thing about technology is you, know, you can just count on it 100% of the time, no matter what, right? 
Before we get on to our time of worship, just a few announcements. Uh, Bible study, our last session of the season is this coming Thursday at 1.30 on our uh, Gospel of Mark. And it is going, again, being chapter 16, we'll be talking about the resurrection. And uh, so that'll, um, all of the uh, episodes in the series have been just a wonderful conversation and look forward to that on Thursday. Uh, 55 plus have an event. Randolph and Debbie Smythe are going to share their experiences of Highway 16, Fort St. John, and other absolutely, and there's no asterisks on absolutely, true stories. And so uh, I know that sign up was going on in Narthex, so that's on the 23rd. Join us at 1.30 downstairs. Uh, what else we got? Messy Church is coming this Friday on the 19th at uh, 5 o'clock here at Trinity. So all you messy churchers, all you kids, all you young families, all you old families, all you everyone are welcome to join us for Messy Church. Uh, we'll have a great time with that. And so the theme on it, you can see there's some fire and stuff going on there. Yeah, the, the theme is on the Pentecost. So we'll, uh, uh, we'll have some fun with that. What else we got going on? I thought there was a slide for we need a property convener still uh, so please uh, look within yourselves look within your inner circles uh, you have someone that can take some leadership in uh, executing uh, the needs of our physical building uh, please uh, if you're feeling called to this ministry uh, come forward let myself know or Gloria McMillan chair of the board uh, we'd uh, we'd be happy to hear from you that's all I had. I know they had lots of fun at games night. At games, not games night. It was a games day. Uh, so I managed to s score a free lunch, and that's always good for me. But uh, uh, yeah, they had a really good turnout. I think it was like 41, I think was the number. And uh, so uh, I know there's lots of cards playing. So I don't know if anyone took all the money or no gambling in the United Church of any shape, way, or form, so uh, none that I was aware of. <laughs> so, anyways, great day. Let's move into our time of worship. And as we do so, let us acknowledge the traditional territory. Remember that we are Treaty 2 people, and we worship God on the historic territory, the Dakota, the, the, Asin the Anishinaabe, the Assiniboine, the Cree, the Oji Cree, the Dene, and homeland of the Red River Métis Nation. And as Christ's people, let us be people of love and of truth and of reconciliation. Let us light the Christ candle. And we light this in the name of the one who blesses us with shalom. Please join me in the call to worship. Turn to Christ. Place your trust in God. Lean into spirit. Let us sing our first hymn, Lord, Speak to Me, from Voices United 589.
Please join me in the opening prayer. God of miracles and truth, bless us as we gather for worship with the power of your Holy Spirit. Reveal your presence in our midst and open our hearts and minds to receive your miraculous love. Strengthen our faith this day that we may go forth as witnesses of your miraculous love. Amen. Our choir anthem is entitled Simply Alleluia. And I think you'll figure out why that's the title. Please join me in the prayer of yearning. Answer us, O God, as we turn to you for mercy and strength. Listen to the yearnings of our hearts and the regrets of our lives. Comfort us in our distress and pour your grace into our lives. 
Redeem us with your love, that we might rise with Christ, newborn and vibrantly alive. Grant us the confidence to witness to your life-giving love. Amen. God fills our hearts with joy and covers our lives with grace. Rest in the truth and be at peace. All is well and all will be well. As God leads us beside the still waters of grace, Christ invites us to offer these still waters of grace and peace to one another that all may know the peace of God. Turn to those around you and bless them with the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. time is it? Ah, I need some kids. I need some kids. Hey. Who's coming up? Cousin. Oh, we have so many friends here today. Your, your, who came? Cousins. Your cousins came. Wow. Well, that's fantastic. Good to see you, cousins. Hello. Come on, Benny. What, what do you got? You got a name? Wow, good for you. Excellent. You like that? All right, so um, I got a story for you today. You know, I'm going to about to tell you. For sure. Um, so, but first question. Who made you? Oh, God. What the screen says. Oh, you guys are cheating off the screen again. <laughs> Man. No, I didn't. So, so, you didn't, so you didn't know I that? Didn't. You didn't? You knew that already? You guys knew that already? I can't even read. You can't even read. Well, there you go. <laughs> There's an ironclad argument right there. Yes. God made you. That's right. And, then my, guess, and my story is, for the readers out there, when God made you. Okay, so you ready for the story? So, I mean, I got it here, but it'll be on the screen, okay? And the words are really small, so you gotta be patient with Reverend Doug here as he tries to make this out. Okay, you ready? When God Made You by Matthew Paul Turner, and uh, very, some very cool illustrations by David Catro. All right, here we go. You, you, when God made you, God made you all shiny and new. An incredible you, uh, a you all your own, you unlike anyone else ever known. An exclusive design, one God refined. You're a perfectly cared, crafted one of a kind. Because when God made you, somehow God knew that the world needed someone exactly like you. You, you, God thinks about you. God was thinking of you long before your debut. From the very beginning, amid history and time, you, little one, never left God's mind. God imagined your eyes, your head shape and size, and knew that what you'd look like when you felt surprised. That's not a surprise look. What's a surprise look? Give me a surprise look. Who looks surprised? There we go. God knew that. God pictured your nose and all ten of your toes. Hey, does everyone got ten toes? Yes. Yeah? Okay. No one, no one has less or more? Okay. Good. I just wanted to make sure the accuracy of this story. Anyways. The sound of your voice, God had it composed. The lines on your hands, your hair, every strand. God knew every detail like it was all planned. It was all planned? Yeah. You certain? <laughs> Fantastic. You, you don't think it was planned? Because <laughs> Kellen thinks it was planned. Who thinks it was planned? I think he just like 
<laughs> pieces that he likes. Oh, okay. So, oh, that's interesting. Kind of like Lego, right? Okay. Oh, so it wasn't. Oh, oh, so you're saying it wasn't planned? He just kind of freestyled it. Is that what you? Okay. That's interesting. That's the create the creation the creator. I like that. Actually, that that works for me. Out of billions of faces from cultures, all races, people God, people God made from all different places. God knew your name, your picture is framed. God's family without you would not be the same. Because when God made you, thus much is true. The world got to meet who God already knew. You, you, when God sees you, God delights in what is and sees only what's true. That you, yes you, in all of your glory bring color and rhyme and, t and time. It brings color and rhythm and time of God's story. Rhyme, that's rhyme, okay, what's that? Rhythm and rhyme, okay, here we go. Thanks for helping me out. I remember I said the part about not being able to see this so good. Bring color and rhythm and rhyme to God's story. I couldn't really what time. Why do you like, you know, is it like in a, you know, an Italian sauce or something? I guys, okay. I get it now. So be you, fully you, a show-stopping review. Live your life in full color, every tint, every hue. Discover, explore, have faith, but love more. And learn and redeem all that God made you for. Use your talents and passions, those gifts that God fashioned. Think up ideas and then put them into action. Mm. What, do you, what do you think you should be doing for God? What kind of things does, do you think God wants you to do? Pray to him. Okay, that's a good one. What else do you think God wants, us, wants you to do? You, you stole my idea. You stole, there we go. <laughs> Do you have an idea what God wants us to do? Anybody? Anything? Help others. There's a good one. Fantastic. We're gonna. We're actually with the big kids. We're gonna talk a little bit about what you can do for God. So that's a nice segue. Here we go. Better back to back to the story. Oh well, that's good. Because God loves you, creating your true self, displaying. When light on the inside through art is portraying. When you make believe the stories conceived, the heroics, the magic, those tricks up your sleeve. Do you have tricks up your sleeve with that jacket? No? Okay. No, nothing up your sleeve. Okay. When you dance alone, spin, spill it, spinning like a cyclone, being whoever, whatever, in a world all your own. Wow, that looks fun. There you go. Happy sticker. God smiles and here's why. In the spark of your eye. A familiar reflection shines bright from inside. Because when God made you and the world oohed and odd, in heaven they called you an image of God. That's cool. An image of God. That means we're kind of like God. God make, made us an image of God. You, you, when God dreams about you, God dreams about all that in you will be true. That's you, God's you, will be hopeful and kind, a giver who lives with all heart, soul, and mind. A dreamer who dreams in big and small themes, one who keeps streaming in journeys upstream. A mover, a shaker, a lover of nature, a builder of bridges, you the peacemaker, a you who views others as sisters and brothers and lives by three words, love one another. A confident you, strong and brave too, you bring you in God's dream coming true. Because when God made you, all of heaven was beaming. Over you, God was smiling and already dreaming. 
And that's the end. Cool. All right. A lot, there was a lot of yous in there, yes, for sure. And we've got in our song, we've got song and dance. Y'all excited about song and dance? Look at that, we've got people ready for song and dance already. And so I can't remember what I chose. It, it's something. Oh, hang on. I know the title because it's relevant. <laughs> Made for this. That's what it's called. Made for this. All right, DJ Donna. Benny? Oh, snack time. Okay. Well, it's also scripture time. Sure. Hmm? <laughs> Our response of Psalm uh, this morning is Psalm 4. It's Voices United, number 727. Holly will play it through, and then we can sing the refrain. So please join. When I call, O God, defender of my cause, for you set me free when I was in distress. Be gracious to me now and hear my prayer. How long 
you people, will you defame my honor? How long will you love what is worthless and seek lies? Know this, that God has chosen the faithful. God hears me when I call. Stand in awe and cease from sin. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifice, sacrifices that are appointed, and you put trust in God. many who say, oh, that we might know some prosperity. Lift up the light of your face on us, O oh God. But you have put gladness in my heart, more than those whose grain and wine are plentiful. Safe and sound, I lie down and sleep. For you alone, God, make me dwell in safety. Our Gospel reading is from Luke chapter 24, verses 36b to 48. Jesus appears to his disciples. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Yet for all their joy, they were still disbelieving and wondering. And he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he, called, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name for all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is a word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Right, so that scripture reading from Luke that you just heard from Dallas, um, it, to give some context about sort of when and what's happening, it, uh, this story comes immediately after the, the road to Emmaus story. And so uh, if you don't recall exactly what that is, uh, it's actually, it's, it's Easter Sunday, uh, Cleopas is the one that's named and his companion. They're, they're walking from Jerusalem home to Emmaus. And, uh, and so unbeknownst to them, Jesus starts walking with them and they have a discussion. 
Jesus opens their minds to the scripture. They have this great conversation. They invite Jesus to their place for, for something to eat. Jesus comes along, and, and uh, again, they're still not recognizing it's Jesus. And then, uh, then Jesus takes the bread, he blesses it, he breaks it, he gives it to them, and then it's, they have that final light bulb moment or his, his, his identity is made known to them, and they go, oh my goodness, this is Jesus, and Jesus vanishes. And they're like, oh my goodness, like, you know, they sort of, they reflect and it's like, wow, like, that's why this day was so amazing. That's why our encounter was so amazing on that, on that road. And so what do they do? They head back to Jerusalem to tell the 11. And so they get to, uh, get to the upper room, and that's when verse 36 starts. That, that Dallas, and while they were talking about this, so that's Cleopas and his companion telling them this story, this amazing thing that happened to them on the road to Emmaus, Jesus himself stood among them. So he does this whole vanishing thing at Emmaus and then pops into appearance in the upper room. And so, you know, a significant piece to these resurrection stories is that resurrection is not just joy. You know, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. I mean, it's, it's also, as we, as we hear these stories about tr what transpired afterwards, it's, it's also kind of awkward and, and, and maybe even scary. I mean, if you put yourself in the disciples' shoes, right? You know, Jesus is crucified, you know, we're, we're brutally arrested and then crucified, and then, and then, then like, the body's missing and he's risen, and then all of a sudden now, now he starts appearing and disappearing and and uh and it's like kind of their whole world's turned upside down i mean it's they're probably confused and uh and you know it's kind of you know it's it's kind of tangible but it's also mysterious you know about how jesus keeps coming and going like this and and then sort of a key point to this is jesus keeps continually telling them peace be with you fear not I mean, that, that line's in there for a reason. Obviously, he's saying fear not because they're afraid, right? In fact, last week's story in John, he, Jesus says it three times. He needs to be, he tells them at least three times, peace be with you, fear not. And it kind of, it, it demonstrates the kind of state, the mindset that the disciples have been in. Peace be with you. And we say this a lot. We say it most Sundays. In fact, we've, you know, we kind of got away from it a bit during the pandemic, uh, concerned about, you know, contact. Um, but in the last few months, we've gotten back into our practice of the, you know, the blessing of peace with each other, which I, I, I love. It's, it's a powerful part of worship. But peace be with you. I mean, what are we saying with that? And I mean, I know I've explained this before, but I like to give you sort of a refresher every once in a while because the word that, that the word peace gets translated from into English is shalom. And peace is the best English word we have for the word shalom, but it's really incomplete. And I think we need to really understand that when we use the word peace, we're actually using, you know, a word that really is coming from what was initially intended as shalom. And shalom means, you know, being in harmony. It means being in harmony with God. It means being in harmony with God's creation. It's being in harmony with your neighbors. And it means being in harmony with yourself. You know, and that's, that's a lot more, you know, than, than just the word peace. I mean, how easy is it to be in harmony with the world? You know, when it feels like sometimes the world doesn't want to be in harmony with you. It's a challenge. I mean, we live in one of the safest places in the world, and yet... All of us, at some point or another in time, we struggle with fear. I mean, it's kind of how we're built. I guess it's a self-preservation 
thing that's built into our DNA. And regardless of our level of safety, we fear of the possibilities of what may come next, what we may lose, what may happen to us. Did I turn, turn off the stove? <laughs> Did I lock the door when I left? Is my, is my back garage locked because, you know, I heard there's some break-ins in the neighborhood? You know, when you, when you put that into context of what's happening in the Ukraine and in Gaza, you know, and what, what we're f- afraid of and what they're afraid of, and a million different things in between, And a big one for many of us is just the fear of change, right? Because change adds an element of the unknown. And that's the part we're fearful of. We are fearful of what we can't anticipate. What if? And this is the issue with the disciples. The fear of the unknown. I mean, their, their world is entirely changed. Like, the man they knew was dead... And probably like all of you, when we know someone's dead, that's, there's a finality of that. A man they knew was dead is now alive. I mean, he bears the wounds of the crucifixion, more proof that he was actually dead. He's not a ghost. You get that from the, the uh, scripture. Because he has a, it says, because he has a physical body, they can touch, they can feel. And also in this one, he eats. He shows up hungry. Hey, you got something to eat? <laughs> I'm famished. You got some fish? Not only that, he can suddenly appear and vanish. This is wild. But what this is also saying, it's, 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 it's really more proof that he is definitely the Messiah. He is the promised one. He's the chosen one. And what does this mean for the world? Right? Like everything has changed now. Everything's different. Things are happening that used to be impossible. So, so what's next? See, in this passage, Jesus is not just addressing sort of the fear of the circumstance that they're experiencing. He's speaking to the fear they need to overcome. To be a witness to what they've just witnessed. He's directing and encouraging them to carry on his legacy. They need the strength and the courage to take the lead of Jesus' ministry. And this is huge. So now we take this story, and what does that say for us? As disciples of Christ, and Christ is calling us to take on the lead of Jesus' ministry, got to kind of ask yourself the question, how is fear stopping us from doing God's bidding? Fear of change? Fear of the unknown? Fear of ridicule? So here's a question. When you pray, when you ask God, what is it you want me to do? Let's talk about the question first. I mean, are you praying that prayer? You know, not what God can do for you, but what you can do for God. And it's important to be asking this question. Because this has helped us lead our lives in the way God wishes us to lead it. Because God is not just a keep doing the status quo God. Oh, just keep doing what you're doing. That's all you need to do. I don't expect anything more from you, my precious child. No, when you ask God what it is you want me to do, you know, you really need to open your mind and open your heart to receive God's answer. If you're having difficulty opening your mind and heart to what God is asking you to do, then ask God to ask you to help you with that. And when you get your answer then fear not. Because Jesus is there to help you and to encourage you. Jesus is there blessing you with shalom. Peace be with you. 
fear not. Then you'll be empowered. Then you'll be ready to do what God is calling you to do. Thanks be to God. And I think God is calling us to sing our next hymn. Christ is alive. Our minute for mission today is entitled Supporting a Rights-Based Approach to Growing Food. The Association of Economic and Social Development Santa Marta um, and the, it's, um, they call it the ADES, which I can't exactly figure out how that translates, but must be from the original Spanish, ADES. A mission and service partner is located in an area of Central America that is very vulnerable to climate change. This hot, dry region regularly experiences drought. Mining projects have also negatively affected the environment and the people of the region. ADES and other community organizations decided to act to protect the community's right to a healthy environment. An example of how ADES has responded is a three-year agroecology project co-funded by the Manitoba Council for International Cooperation and the United Church of Canada Foundation, along with mission and service. Wow, they looked to Manitoba for like, uh, uh, help with agriculture. Who knew, right? There's people that know something about agriculture in Manitoba. Agroecology benefits the land and water because it recycles nutrients back into the soil. It also reduces production costs, lessening the financial burden on rural farmers. In this project, ADES works closely with community to grow food in a rural region of El Salvador, promoting sustainable agriculture that protects biodiversity and maintains the integrity of the land and upholds rural culture. And at the center of the project is the Dora Alicia Soto 
school farm where rural families, mainly led by women, learn about agro agroecology. The school provides training, technical expertise, and seeds indigenous to the region. It focuses on preserving the surrounding environment and upholding gender and human rights as part of its approach to food security. Your gifts to mission and service help support ADES's agroecology project. Thank you for your, ge your generosity. As we have been loved, we are invited to love. And as God has given generously to us, we are invited to give generously to God and to God's church. May our hearts bring him, bring May our hearts brim with love and generosity for all as we enter this time of offering. The plate is in the back of the pedestal. You see it in your comings in and your goings out. And let us stand as you're able to sing the doxology, What Can I Do? God of love and grace, bless these gifts with your abundant love and your life-giving grace. Bless us as we bear witness to your love and grace in all that we say, all that we give, and all what we do. Amen. Please be seated. So as we move into our time of our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession, I, I invite you just to take a moment to calm your mind, calm yourself, and reflect on those within your inner circles, your family, your friends, those close to you. I invite you to spread that circle farther into our greater community, to the province, to the rest of our country, and even beyond that throughout our world, as we pray. God, our maker, source of Easter power and hope, you have walked with your faithful people through many generations, people facing challenge and uncertainty, people seeking your purpose and promise. We still face challenges and uncertainty, even with Easter in our hearts. Walk with us and with those for whom we pray for this day, so that your resurrecting power may lead us in lives of faithfulness. In the name of Christ, our risen Lord. We pray for children and young people who must think about the future in uncertain times, facing threats old and new. Give them hope rooted in the knowledge that their lives matter to you. Show them how to make a difference in the world, whatever threats they face as they grow. In the name of Christ, our risen Lord. We pray for people for whom age or experience, illness or disability creates barriers to full participation in your world. Surround each one in pain or despair with your comfort and renew in each one a sense of dignity and purpose. Show them how much they matter to you and to us. In the name of Christ, our risen Lord. We pray for all those facing grief and any kind of loss. Give them strength and comfort. We pray for communities challenged by forces beyond their control natural disaster, and environmental threats, conflict and violence, economic hardship. Give courage to those facing these challenges and wisdom to those who lead so that well-being may be restored and hope for the future prevail. In the name of Christ, our risen Lord. As signs of spring emerge, we pray for your creation. 
for creatures losing habitat and unique species at risk, for oceans clogged with plastic, and the earth aching for moisture as climate warms. Jesus, you are the firstborn of all creation. Help us to honor you by caring for the earth and its fragile balances in the ways we live and the priorities we set. In these ways, too, we would be your disciples. And so we pray the words you taught us, knowing that you are our mother and our father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us sing our last hymn, I Am a Child of God. witnesses of God's love. We are witnesses of God's love. You are witnesses of Christ's life. We are witnesses of Christ's life. You are witnesses of the power of the Holy Spirit. We are witnesses of life and love in the Spirit. Go forth as witnesses of the blessings of our God. Amen. Amen.